Hypothesis testing for variance in standard deviation uses a chi-square distribution similarly to other forms of a hypothesis testing. As an example, here's a chi-square distribution with 20 degrees of freedom. We could have a left-tailed test, a right-tailed test, or a two-tailed test. And in each of these graphs, the red lines represent the critical values. The shaded areas are the rejection regions, and they are equal to the level of significance. Noted as alpha in one-tailed tests and one-half alpha for two-tailed tests. And the critical values are often noted as chi-square naught for a one-tailed test and chi-square left and chi-square right for two-tailed tests. The formula we use for hypothesis testing for variance in standard deviation is chi-square equals n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared. In this formula, chi-square is the standardized test statistic. n is the sample size, s is the sample standard deviation, or s squared is the sample variance, sigma is the population standard deviation, or sigma squared is the population variance, and this is what is being hypothesized. And this follows a chi-square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. There are two conditions that must be met to use the formula. The sample must be a random sample and the population must be normally distributed. So let's go through an example to see how this works step by step. A company that makes a popular energy bar claims that the variance of the amount of protein in the bars is no more than 0.75. You think that this is incorrect. You find in a random sample of 28 bars the variance to be 0.88. Assume the population is normally distributed. At a level of significance of alpha equals 0.05, is there enough evidence to reject the company's claim? Step one is to make sure the conditions are met to use the chi-square test. It is stated that the sample is a random sample, and it was also stated that the population is normally distributed, so we're good to go. Step two is to write out the claim and identify the null and alternative hypotheses. The claim is that sigma squared, the population variance, is less than or equal to 0.75. The null hypothesis contains a statement of equality, so h sub 0 is sigma squared is less than or equal to 0.75. The alternative hypothesis is the complement of the null hypothesis and contains a statement of inequality, so h sub a is sigma squared is greater than 0.75. Step 3 is to identify the level of significance, which was given, alpha equals 0.05. Step 4 is to identify the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, the sample size minus 1. So 28 minus 1 equals 27 degrees of freedom. Step 5 is to determine the test to use, left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. And because the alternative hypothesis contains a greater than inequality, this will be a right-tailed test. Step 6 is to determine the critical value or values. And since this is a one-tailed test, a right-tailed test, there will be only one critical value. Since the level of significance is alpha equals 0.05, we need to find the value for chi-square naught, the critical value. In a chi-square distribution table, where the area to the right equals 0.05. In the table, we go to the 0.05 column at the top and the 27 degrees of freedom row on the left. And the value where these two intersect is 40.113. So the critical value, chi-square naught, equals 40.113. Step 7 is to identify the rejection region. In our rejection region is any standardized test statistic value that falls in the shaded area. That is any value that is greater than chi-square naught, which is any value that is greater than 40.113. Step 8 is to use the formula and calculate the chi-square value, or the value of the standardized test statistic. Using the formula, we have chi-square equals 28 minus 1 times 0.88 divided by 0.75. Calculating out, we get chi-square equals 31.68. Step 9 is to make a decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. On our graph, you can see that the standardized test statistic does not fall in the rejection region as chi-square, the standardized test statistic, is less than chi-square naught, the critical value. So in this case, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Step 10 is to interpret the decision. There is not enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to reject the company's claim that the variance of the amount of protein in the bars is no more than 0.75. Alright, one more example. A company that produces rechargeable batteries claims that the standard deviation of the lengths of times of operation for their batteries is less than 4.7 minutes. A random sample of 41 batteries has a standard deviation of 3.5 minutes. Assume the population is normally distributed. At a level of significance of alpha equals 0.10, is there enough evidence to support the company's claim? Step 1 is to make sure the conditions are met to use the chi-squared test. It is stated that the sample is a random sample, and it was also stated that the population is normally distributed, so both conditions are met. Step 2 is to write the claim out and identify the null and alternative hypotheses. 
The claim is that sigma, the population standard deviation, is less than 4.7. The alternative hypothesis contains a statement of inequality, so h sub a is sigma is less than 4.7. The null hypothesis is a complement of the alternative hypothesis and contains a statement of equality, so h sub 0 is sigma is greater than or equal to 4.7. Step 3 is to identify the level of significance, which was given alpha equals 0.10. Step four is to identify the degrees of freedom, which is n minus one, sample size minus one, so 41 minus one equals 40 degrees of freedom. Step five is to determine the test to use, left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. And because the alternative hypothesis contains the less than inequality, this will be a left-tailed test. Step six is to determine the critical value or values. And since this is a one-tailed test, a left-tailed test, there will only be one critical value. Since the level of significance is alpha equals 0.10, we need to find the value for chi-square naught, the critical value, in a chi-square distribution table where the area to the right equals 0.90. In the table, we go to the 0.90 column at the top and the 40 degrees of freedom row on the left. And the value where these two intersect is 29.051. So the critical value, chi-square naught, equals 29.051. Step seven is to identify the rejection region, and our rejection region is any standardized test statistic value that falls in the shaded area. That is any value that is less than chi-square naught, which is any value that is less than 29.051. Step eight is to use the formula and calculate the chi-square value, or the value of the standardized test statistic. Using the formula, we have chi-square equals 41 minus one times 3.5 squared divided by 4.7 squared. Calculating out, we get chi-square equals 22.18. Step nine is to make a decision to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. On our graph, you can see that the standardized test statistic does fall in the rejection region as chi-square, the standardized test statistic, is less than chi-square naught, the critical value. So in this case, we will reject the null hypothesis. Step 10 is to interpret the decision. There is enough evidence at the 10% level of significance to support the company's claim that the standard deviation of the lengths of time of operation for their batteries is less than 4.7 minutes. All right, my friends, that be the basics on hypothesis testing for the variance in standard deviation. Hopefully this video helped you out. I do have more statistical videos right there for you. Till next time, I am out of here.